My name is Kenrick Sylvester. I was born in 1942 um, on the island of Dominica in the Caribbean. Um, Dominica is a relatively small island, um, approximately 60,000 people, 305 square miles, perhaps smaller than Brampton in total area and size. Um, it's a pretty friendly community. Everybody knows just about everybody. Um, my folks are from the urban areas, but I grew up in, in Roseau, which is the capital, and attended the Dominica Grammar School and elementary school before that. So it's a uh, basically an agricultural type economy. Um, my, my parents were peasant farmers. We grow things and raise things and you know the, the mule and the, the, the brook running for the little patch of land and that's basically the type of community that I, I was raised in. So could you share with us how you met your wife? Okay. Uh, as I said, Rosa is a small community and my wife went to the uh, Wesley High School. I was going to the Dominica Grammar School and we became friends um, during our school years and, and after that um, the friendship continued. Then I went away to study in Jamaica and my wife continued to work with um, the education department. When I came back again the friendship continued and we eventually got married and that was about three days before I told her that, uh, before I came to Canada. So that was quite a a shock for both of us, but um, but we survived it. And about a year after I landed in in Canada, I I asked her to come up, which she did. My journey to Canada was a rather interesting, almost experimental type of journey. Um, after graduating from the University of Jamaica, or the West is in Jamaica, um, I worked at home for a while. But you know, you learn things abroad, and when you come home, the opportunities to put them into use or into practice is not always there. So you look elsewhere. You look to the States. You look to Canada. You look to England. But Canada seemed uh, to be a very good choice. Um, I, I had many friends in Canada, and they always told me about the great opportunity that existed in Canada. So I, I always looked to Canada as a politically neutral country, and people always seem to like Canada. So. Canada seemed to have been the obvious choice. Now, uh, making the transition from Dominica to Canada was a bit of a challenge. But um, at first, it was quite difficult. But when I got into the mainstream, it became, it became easier. Was it hard to leave home for Canada? It, it, was, it was difficult, yeah. Um, you used a particular lifestyle. Um, where again you know everybody, um, the mechanic is your friend, the butcher is your friend, the baker is your friend, um, you know the school principal and he knows you. Even the prime minister you know because you probably sat on the same school bench with him. So you had that sense of connection in that community. And then to be transposed to a, a larger society like Canada where you're just a very small almost insignificant person that, that um, created some form of culture shock, I think. That was my initial experience. So leaving home, uh, the euphoria disappeared rather quickly after I landed in Canada because I've, I'd left a lot of um, familiar surroundings and a warm, friendly environment to come into a country where I'm almost not known and I have to reestablish myself. I had some ambivalence about that. Um, they were happy for me. I mean, everybody wanted to leave for Canada or to the United States or to England. Um, everybody thought Canada was a great choice, you know, um, a great decision. So they were happy for me, and I was happy for myself until I landed, and then, and then all of these feelings of did I do the right thing? Um, I'm lost in this big country. You know, all of these feelings be began to set in. Well, trying to make a new country your home is, is never easy. Um, you, you do not know too many people. So when you get on the subway and you see a familiar face, even if they're not from your own country, you're delighted. 
it's it's it's, it's a thrill for you just to see another face. You have some some common thread with someone on the subway. So that that um, experience is good. Trying to get a job is also was also very difficult because you you're going to, to apply for a position and people can always find reasons not to give you a position and perhaps the the li biggest stumbling block was canadian experience they always ask you for canadian experience now it begs the question if you've never worked here how are you going to have canadian experience and some employers sort of told you it was a leap of faith for them to to employ you because they really didn't know what type of training what type of experience getting your creden credentials accepted was also a major challenge you know um because you're trained elsewhere, you're not held in the same in the same high regard until you're hired and they discover that in fact your training is satisfactory or, or even superb, then then you know, getting employment or finding employment was is a challenge. And because of that I found it is necessary to make contact with people from the same general area and would travel from Brampton all the way to Scarborough, all the way to Ajax, if I knew I had a friend there and we could just play a game of Monopoly, a game of dominoes, just to connect and, and to bond because you, you don't have any real connection with the society in which you live. So, you know, those are my initial experiences when I came here. Um, I think she was, um, I wouldn't say traumatized, but I think she was just quite a shock for her as well. Uh, culture shock for us um, is, is not uncommon, coming from the Caribbean, a hot climate, a small society, everybody knows everybody, into a vast land, not nearly as warm and not nearly as friendly because it is so big. Um, and, and then trying to get employment and trying to, to start a family, it's always a very difficult transition. So she, her experience was almost as difficult as mine, I think. Uh, I think she enjoyed a slight advantage because she came to Canada knowing I was here. And by then I had an apartment, I had bought some furniture, I had, I had everybody, everybody buys a small black and white television, which I had. Um, so she was coming to a home, whereas I just came on my own. Well, <laughs> interestingly enough, um, I, stayed in, and I stayed in Dominica. I got a lot of these Canadian magazines, and, and because I'm in the field of medical technology, I look for employment opportunities. The one that, that attracted me was uh, one that I saw in the Cowican district in the Northwest Territories. Now, that made sense to me at the time because I had no idea of the vastness of this land we call Canada. So applying for a position in Canada is Canada. So I said, Northwest Territories, what differences make? I, I, will, I will go there. When I landed in Toronto and I met a few of my friends and I told them what my goal was and where I was traveling to, they thought I was completely out of my mind. They said, are you a lunatic in Northwest Territories? Oh, you go there, you wouldn't know anybody. You wouldn't meet anybody. And nobody would come up to visit you for sure. You know? So um, I quickly changed my mind and decided that um, Toronto was the place I was going to be because that's where I had the, the largest number of friends and the largest number of people I met, I met come in contact with. I moved to Brampton in 1974. I'm almost dating myself here, but that's a long time ago. At that time, the population, I believe, was 70,000 people. Um, I knew nothing about Brampton at all. We were living in an apartment on, on Dixon and Islington, and my wife and I decided that this might be the right time to look for a home. And calling the real estate agent, and he took us around, and Brampton seemed a logical choice. I think we looked at Malton as well, but um, we, we were not too happy with that environment. I'm not sure why. I think the train was, was going through Malton. Um, so he took us to the next municipality, which was Brampton, and showed us a few properties. And it seemed like a nice community to raise kids. Um, and the house prices were not too bad at that time, too. So it seemed like a logical choice. 
Yeah, I think um, our, our biggest challenge is moving to Brampton um, was transportation. At that time, the Fortin obviously did not exist, and there was no fast way out of Brampton. Um, and we found that to be quite a challenge, right? Because she worked in Toronto, I worked in Toronto, and moving from uh, commuting from Brampton to Toronto at that time in 1974 was a very, very difficult um, experience. Um, also, uh, a few of my friends who were living in Toronto decided to move to Brampton, so that made it easier for me to, to make that decision to, to live in Brampton. There was a lot of farmland um, in Brampton, but you know, um, a lot of the greater Toronto area was also a farm community. I think Mississauga was a farm community at that time as well, um, and Vaughan and, you know, just the core city of Toronto was, was, was a city. But you know, if you, if you went beyond um, Finch at night time, you'd see fireflies. So, you know, all of this greater Toronto area was in fact farm community. So Brampton did not feel um, more like a farm community than any, than any, any place else. It, it just felt like a small, um, friendly type of community where, you know, it would be good to, to raise children away from the hustle and bustle of, of, of Toronto. Um, I believe the, the basic um, holidays uh, of Christmas, Easter, um, are practiced um, by my family. But you know, um, Carnival is a special time. Uh, and, and we look forward to that time where we eat a lot of the local food and, and, and just, you know, practice the, 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 do the things that we, we did at home during Carnival time. It's not, it's not a celebration that is common to Canada, but it's a celebration that's common to the Caribbean. So we, we do spend a little extra time on that. Um, my wife, of course, is a very excellent cook. Uh, her name is Judith. Um, and I should share this little story with you. Um, when my kids were small and they would see me in the kitchen, you know, they would just break up in tears because they know they're going to have a bad time. This is just a bad time for them. Um, my son would, would start crying and say, Dad, what are you doing in the kitchen? Because he knows I, I could not cook a thing. And his mother, of course, is an excellent cook. Now, um, when he grew a little older, I, in fact, mastered a little bit of cooking so I could cook some local Caribbean stuff for him. And he couldn't tell sometimes if his